Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. Uh, I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you my Gold Paladin GB13 Gurgit deck profile. Yay! All right, let's get started. Um, starter, it is still Night of Early Dawn Coel, um, because we did not get a better or new starter for Gurgit, and this is the most optimal Gold Paladin starter for every Gold Paladin deck that exists at the moment today. So... Finishing that off, we're going to go right into grade 3, starting with four copies of Golden Holy Sword Gurgit. Uh, GB2, Unite, uh, this gets um, Intercept, and all your or all your Regards get Intercept, and all of your units in the back row can Intercept from the back row. Uh, yeah, so Stride Skill, Count plus 1, Soul plus 1, when your unit's Stride, uh, look at four cards from the top of your deck, call one, if it has a Unite ability, call another card from the top of your deck. Um... Yeah, basically our main ride target of the deck. Nothing's changed. Uh, cool. New cards. We got three copies of Militant Act Dragon. Militant Act Dragon is a special card because he is the first card to have a rear guard stride skill. So uh, his skill is Van or Rear. When your unit strides, you count a plus one. You put all of your cards other than that are on your circles other than Van, and uh, you if you put them on the bottom of your deck, if you put one or more, you'll get three cards on top of your deck, call two, and put the third one on the bottom of your deck. So, important thing is this is anti-Link Joker. Uh, the cost says put all the cards. Uh, locked cards are not units, but they are still considered cards. So if you have five locked rear guards uh, and you use his stride skill, you get to put all those five cards back on the bottom of your deck, look at the top three, call two, Basically, uh, Chaos Crisis does not get his unlock skill off because no cards were unlocked. And uh, you get to screw over Link Joker plays. This also works with uh, Mega Colony when Gridora comes out. So that's going to be a fun time. So this is an uh, anti-control Gold Paladin card. It's fantastic. Goodbye, Ezel. We miss you. You used to be the only uh, anti-Link Joker support, but thank you, Militant Act Dragon, to save the day. For grade twos, we are running four copies of Knight of Daylight Canarius. So, Canarius' skill is Unite. If you have a Vanguard with Gurion's name, he gets plus 4k. And then, um, if you play someone rare, you choose a card from your hand, uh, discard it. Look at top three, call one, put the rest on the bottom. Uh, so, he's basically Lopier Shooter, but you don't have to call it from deck. And um, we run this because he... Uh, He's a 13k beater by himself. If you use um, Connius's, I believe it's Connius, the, the new grade one that we are running in this deck, Car Carinus, that's how, that's his name. Uh, if you use Carinus's skill, he gets plus four, so he's 17 on his own. You beef him up with more power columns. He's just a good card, and he helps you call stuff wherever you need to. He also has the Unite ability, so he procs off Gurgit's stride skill. We run for this because we want to see this as often as we can with Heavenly Law Gurgit's skill so that we can call this and then use his skill to call another unit to make two more attacks during the battle phase. So yeah, four copies of that. Next up for grade twos, we are running two copies of Paramour. Paramour's skill is uh, Unite, um, he gets plus 2k, and GB1 when he's placed on rear, counter bus 1, look at the top 3, call, call, one, uh, call 1 to the same column as himself and you put the rest on the bottom. So we run this because we want to fill the field for um, all of our turns, basically, because uh, Gurgit Helios needs a full field to max out his power, and uh, he has the Unite ability, so he procs off Gurgit Stride skill, and he's overall just a really helpful card. This is also good for Heavenly Law turns when you call this and you call something behind it to make another column, big column to swing with. Uh, he helps you fill up your field, and that's basically what you really want to be doing with this deck, is filling up the field both during your main phase and then during your battle phase, extending your front row attacks. Um, next up for our grade twos, we're running two copies of a new card. Knight of Sunny Day, Salonius. Um, Salonius is a really helpful card in my opinion because it's the plus 2k that I like. His skill is Unite. If you have a grade 4 Vanguard with Gurgit, all of your units get plus 2k. So on top of the Heavenly Law turns, you're going to add an additional 2k to all your units. So he's beefing up columns even higher. If you call him out with Heavenly Law's skill, you know, all the columns that you thought were 
big might be even bigger and hit for better numbers. And uh, he has a defense skill. It's at the beginning of the guard step that your vanguard with Gurgit's being attacked. You put it in the soul and you call two cards from the top of your deck. So it's not up to two, it's call two. So you have to call both. So it is a minus two to your deck. Uh, it does suck because Gold Pouting Wreck goes through their decks pretty fast. If you do not want to run this card, uh, perfectly understandable. Uh, alternative you can run um, is two more copies of this, um, Henrynes. So you can run four copies of this, but I choose to run two because I like uh, Selenius' power-up skill. And also it's a new card, you know, try out new cards. So lastly for our grade twos, uh, we run two copies of Knight of Remaining Sun, Henrynes. Uh, Henrynes' skill is when he's placed on rear, count plus one, soul plus one, look at the top three, um, search for up to one, call to rear, put the rest in the bottom. So he's like Canarius' skill, but instead of discard, it's Karn Blast, Soul Blast. On top of that, if you have a Vanguard or Gurgit's name, this unit and the unit called both get 3k. So making columns bigger, um, he becomes a 12k base on his own. If you use a Karnis' skill and give him 4k, becomes a 16k attacker on his own. So yeah, uh, I like Henrynus because he calls cards and he beefs them up. Under our grade ones, I am in love with this new grade one that we got. It is Knight of Isolation Karanis. So A, Karanis has resist if you have a Vanguard with Unite, so that's great. You know, Unite's always welcomed in a Gold Paladin deck if this skill is really good. Thank you, Marsha. Um, uh, the other skill, which is also really great, is Unite. Rest this unit. If you do, you choose one of your other units and give it 4k. And then... Um, if after that you can choose one of your other rear guards uh, with a different name than himself, and you can put it on the bottom of your deck, draw a card, and counter charge one. So this is also really helpful because uh, Gurgit Stride's skill calls units rested to rear guard circle. Uh, if you call a unite unit, so what you can do is if you call this and then you call a rested card, you can fill up your field, make some stuff, rest this, give something 4k, put the rested card that you did from his stride skill back into your deck draw and counter charge so it gives you more pluses helps you uh, filter out your deck if you want to call the triggers from your hand and put them back into your deck it's a really great card honestly we replaced this for horsa because the deck doesn't rely on the horsa power as much anymore now that we have eight gurgits at least eight gurgits in our g zone uh, speaking of uh, power grade ones we're running two copies of spring sun conanius um, his skill is Unite. This gets plus 1k for each of your Unite units. So that counts himself. So we run a lot of Unite units in the deck. So this will often get a, a lot of power during the turn. So he gets powered up from your field. He gets powered up from Heavenly Law. Powered up from Conius or Henrynes. It's, it's, so it's a good grade one. The reason I'm running it is because uh, it's more cards in the deck that I can call out to have attacking power. If I call it out with Heavenly Law, uh, it can be anywhere between 11k to like 16k on his own, potentially. So he's just a really good card, a good target. He has a Unite skill, so procs off Gurgit skill. It's a good tech. I like it if you don't want to run this card, if you don't have access to the card. I would recommend another copy of this, if you want. And then another copy of my next grade one, which is two copies of uh, Sunshine Knight Jeffrey. So Jeffrey's skill is at the end of the battle of the boost, you, knight, uh, you put in the soul and you draw a card. Uh, you know, Zodiac Time Beast got one, uh, Vanquisher got one, you know, all these, all these decks are getting Jeffrey clones and uh, it's great. So you should still run Jeffrey because Gurgit needs soul and drawing cards is great. Alright, we finished up with uh, the power, or like the boosting grade ones. Next up, we're going to go over a new card, which is four copies of Liberator Improved Falcon. This is my PG of choice uh, right now because it's anti-Link Joker again. Um, the skill is um, when you place it on from hand to uh, the guard circle, choose one of your units, and it cannot be hit if you, you have to discard for the cost. Typical PG skill. The other skill, uh, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, this card is misprinted. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to see if I can make it where you guys can read this skill. It says, choose this card and another card from your drop zone with the same card name and bind them face up. That's actually um, not correct. 
The skill of this card when it came out in Japan was uh, you choose another card from your drop zone with the same name as this and bind it face up. So the difference is if this is your drop zone and what it says here is, oh, you bind two for the cost when it's actually, as long as you have two, you bind one. So this makes it so that you can do the skill more throughout the game. And uh, the reason you want to be able to do that is to put more cards back into your deck and recycle and just because it's still a decent skill to have against the Link Joker matchup. So his skill is, uh, let's I already talked about the cost, so let's talk about the skill. It's choose up to two cards from your circles, other than Vam, and put them on the bottom of your deck. If you do, if you put one or more, you uh, look at the top three, uh, call one, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this, again, kind of like Milton Act Dragon, it says cards, not, re not units, not rear guards. It just says choose two cards on your circles other than Van. So locked cards are still cards that you have access to through this skill. So if you're not on Militant Act Dragon and you're forced to ride Gurgit, uh, you can use this skill from the drop zone to put locked cards on your field back into your deck and call out one new card. So if this is honestly just strictly for, not strictly, but I would say it's more helpful during the Link Joker matchup. This card is helpful in other matchups uh, just to help make your, make your field a little better. I like the card. Um, if you feel that you don't want to run this because your locals are not super Link Joker centric, a good alternative I would suggest you can run is four copies of Holy Mage Alicia. Uh, her skill is that she can be called from, she can basically be placed on the guard circle, uh, not from hand, and still have access to her nullify skill. So that means cards like um, Slay Me Flare and Selenius can um, use their skills to look at the top of the deck, uh, call it, and still be able to use its skill. So this PG can't be called from deck, this one can. It also has the Unite ability, so it helps uh, proc off Gurgit's stride skill. And her Unite ability is also pretty decent because it's when it's placed, you choose another rear guard from the bottom of your deck, and it gets plus 15 shield. So it saves you hand. I don't feel like hand is too much of an issue in this deck. That's why Improved Falcon's good. Uh, you guys pick one or the other. They both basically do the same thing for me. I'm playing around with Improved Falcon for now because it is a new card and I want to get more familiar with it until I make my decisions. Um, I don't really, I guess just one more thing I want to say is I don't think there's like a super perfect or optimal build for this deck. I just think you guys can just play around with whatever play sets you want to play and the deck should basically should still do the same thing. Uh, four copies of our Stride Fodder, Gorbaduck. Stride Fodder, you guys should know what this does. And uh, next up, we're just going to go right into our triggers. So first off, we are running eight crits, four of them being, of course, our Scarface Lion. And then the last four being our Flame of Victory. So crits are still pretty the same. Flame of Victory is still a good card. Uh, don't use it that often, but it's still nice to have to move to Soul Gifts Lane 3k for that extra little push in numbers. Still nice to have eight crit because... Gorgia Helios has a um, Guard Restrict skill, so applying more crits to your van does help in that case as well. I run four copies of Player of the Holy Pike, Jerry. Um, this card you can honestly take out if you want to. Um, he does have the Unite ability, so he procs off Gurgit's Stride skill. His skill is that Unite, he gets 3k, and at the end of the battle that he attacks or boosts, uh, you move him, You must move him to soul and counter charge. So he does help you clear the way for new units. Um, he helps you counter charge. He helps fill the soul. My only issue with the card is that he's a stand trigger. Um, any other trigger, honestly, this would probably would have been way better. But again, we can't have broken crits or broken <coughs> flow goal. Anyways, um, so another thing you can do if you want to play the the... Gurgit Helios focused deck, you can just run 12 crits. Um, basically, with Helios, uh, your opponent can't guard a grade one or higher units from their hand, and he's swinging at like 51k base on, typically. Um, so, seeing more crits will basically end the game faster. So, if you're fo trying to make your Gurgit Den deck to win, uh, more crits will help you win faster. Uh, Jerry is just more. 
has more utility because he has Unite, he becomes a 7k booster, you know, there's, he has synergy with the deck, so I decided to still keep him. Lastly, we are running our four copies of our new heal trigger, Liberator Shaggy Rabbit. We took out Elixia Liberator. Uh, Elixia's skill only applied to a, one specific G unit, which was, or G Guardian, which was Elise. The El Elixia's skill was Soul Blast 1. Uh, if you pay the cost for Elise, if uh, you have one or less damage face up, you can counter charge one for the cost of a Soul Blast. Um, Shaggy Rabbit is pretty much a little better. Its skill is after you pay the cost of a G Guardian, you bind two copies of it from the drop zone, and you can choose to counter charge or soul charge. So because this deck does a lot of counter blasting and does help have soul blast costs for skills, this is a welcomed addition to the Gold Paladin deck. It also has Liberator in this name, so that means you can use it in the Garmore deck as well. And it's a high beast. It's it's just a very good card to run. All right, on to our G units. Running four copies of the new guy that you guys have been waiting for. It's Master Swordsman of First Light, Gurgit Helios. So this card is both great and honestly, like, just kind of simple. That's really the best way I can put it. He's a simple card that does a simple skill, but it's what the deck, it helps the deck a lot. Uh, his skill is once return, act, unite. Choose a face down copy of itself, turn face up, this gets drive plus one. So that means you can do it during your first stride and you get quad drive. The second skill is generation break three. This gets plus 5k for each of your rear guards and your opponent cannot guard grade one or higher from their hand until the end of the battle. So this will, if you have a full field, swings for 51 by itself. Your opponent can't guard a grade ones. So if you see two or three crits, you might win the game that turn. Um, the quad drive helps because you want to build up hand. And he has Gurgit in the name, so uh, the fact that you flip a copy of itself face up means that you will add more power for when you do the Heavenly Law Gurgit skills. I mean, turns, not skills. Same thing. Speaking of Heavenly Law Gurgit, we are running four copies of the Beast. Holy Sword of Heavenly Law Gurgit. We are running four of this because going into this uh, twice uh, will almost basically guarantee you the game if you don't you just kind of got unlucky or the game is going on way too long for whatever reason his skill is act counter boss one choose a face on copy of itself turn face up uh, until the end of the turn this card gets red text which is unite when this attacks you look at the top seven cards of your deck call one so looking at the top seven is always great because it means you basically get to look through most of your deck and pick the target that you probably want to call. Uh, the targets you're probably going to want to call are basically Canarius and Henrynes so that you can like go rear, rear, attack with Van, call this, call another thing, basically making a front row all over again for five attacks for the turn. And then he also has continuous red text. Um, if you if you have the green if you have the auto skill uh, all your units get 2k for each face up gurgit in your g zone so if you're going into this after using all four copies of this and two copies of this you flip the you flip the final one over and you've got 2 4 6 8 10 plus 12k to your field so all your units getting that much power is just tremendous and it's amazing so it's it's a big difference between the 6k power that we had before um just continuing on uh we've only running um one copy of sunrise ray radiant sword and uh because it's just a great unit and also this card is pretty old <laughs> just to have it and one gba typically you will not be able to go into this card due to the fact your deck will be so thin but if you do find yourself in a scenario where you can use the card why not that's the reason it's in here. That's what a tech is. Um, I before had these two copies as Glorious Raining Dragon. The reason I am not running Glorious Raining Dragon in this deck is because A, we're not running Poil, and B, we're not running Horsa. The reason we're not running those two is because the main focus of the deck before was to make power columns with Horsa, make our columns hit for like 30k uh, base. And Horsa and Poil helped achieve that, but because the combination between Heavenly Law and uh, Helios, it's the the power ups can apply to all these units. So instead of focusing on running units that 
power up columns, I decided to run units that call more cards. So in the end, these two are just tech options. You're basically going to be going back and forth into Helios and Heavenly Law, back and forth, back and forth, until you win the game. Um, I'm running one of this because uh, sometimes you might be in a situation where you can't discard for Heavenly Law and you also used up all your Helioses. Whatever reason, you're, you have to use <laughs> Radiant Sword to make all your columns big. I've never been in that scenario before, but I run the card just in case. GB8, just because it's GB8. <laughs> One copy of Sabri's staple in most decks because you want to be able to take advantage of your opponent being grade locked because you're an asshole. Uh, one copy of Rhea, two copies of Slimy Flare, and two copies of Elise. So the G zone is still the same. Um, these are pretty good cards. This helps you um, bring back field. Um, the fact that we're not running Elixia Liberator anymore means I'm not using this as often, which I actually do appreciate because Slimy Flare does make the bigger shield. And uh, Ray is in here to, uh, as flip fodder for Elise and also because um, generic, if you have two rear guards plus five shield, is still welcome in the deck. So that is our 16 card G zone. That was the main deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. If you have any comments or if you have any concerns or questions about my deck options and choices, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, I just want to point out that this deck is... Um, I don't believe that there, again, is an optimal way to build this deck. This deck is basically freedom choice of the player. Uh, build it however you want. I just recommend at least run four of this, four of this, four of this. Everything else is basically up to you. Um, try out my build, see if you like it. And um, yeah, hope you all have a great holiday season and um, enjoy. Thanks.